Hi guys, it's Joy, and if you saw the title of this video, we're gonna talk about some stuff. So to continue on this segue, we know Trisha says that there are voice memos that I guess may or may not be leaked, but apparently leaked voice memos are, I guess that means Trisha just says there are uh, recordings of Shane talking crap about her that exists. Um, she doesn't really explain the details. It's really hard to understand. If you wanna see it, go watch my other video. I have links in the description. I'll have links in the cards so you guys can see the other video and you can kind of go and see exactly what was said and what was done. But um, this is where we're at with Trisha. And here's what I find really interesting is that she keeps citing people that are known to not have the best character or known to lie as to say, well, I heard, I heard this gossip from this person and it must be true. And she's been referencing Gabby Hanna and Peter Mon. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Peter Mon. Um, I know some about Gabby, not a ton, but I know she's not really a reliable source. But let's get into Peter. Everybody's saying, well, there's so many people backing it up. There's Peter Mon, there's just... Guys, that doesn't mean anything. I had so many people that were backing up conspiracy theories as truth about me, nonstop with no evidence, or the evidence they had was fake, or shoddy. I've seen it all on YouTube. So I always wait to get actual evidence. But let's talk a little bit about Peter Mon right now because I feel like people's memories, people so easily forget. And I guess I understand. I, look, I've, I got memory issues, so I can kind of understand that. But people seem to forget who people are. So the first thing is, and I've been saying this, Trisha is an admitted pathological liar. Now she says she hasn't done this in a long time, but can we trust that? How could we trust that if she is a pathological liar? And maybe she's telling the truth, I don't know. Trisha's also a known troll. Trisha will lie to her audience and troll them, and she will do all kinds of manipulative things, and she's admitted to this. So, and Trisha also will blur the lines between her real life versus trolling, and sometimes she doesn't come clean about it, sometimes she does, and she'll do horribly offensive things, right? So that's a behavior that we know Trisha to do. So I don't, when Trisha says there are memos, but then I don't even get like a written word of what's going on, which really I would need to hear it. But then again, she would just be completely disrespecting Shane and Ryland's privacy. But at this point, she is on a very self-destructive path with that and just does not care who she hurts because I guess she feels like right now it is okay to just bully people and destroy people. You know, Shane and Rylan, who did nothing to her, it was hair by Jay that did something to her. They haven't done anything but be kind and respectful and somehow they're the horrible people. I feel like we're an upside down day. I support Trisha a thousand percent with what happened to her with Hair by Jay. I do not support her bullying Shane Dawson when I haven't seen any evidence that he deserves the length that she's gone. Even if Shane was talking a little crap or even if he was venting about her to somebody privately, I don't think he deserves this level of crap. I just really don't. I really, really don't. That's just my opinion. You can see more of it on the other video. And I've got some really good counterpoints I think you guys will like. Trust me, they're good. It explains a lot going on. Um, also, guys, I want to make sure and say, go check out Mike, an actor. If you haven't seen him, I'm not getting paid to say this. He's got amazing videos and amazing points of view. He's so smart and so funny. Go check him out. I'll have a video in the description and you can go see him there. Go subscribe. He's just... He's a bigger one than me, a bigger one. He probably doesn't need my help, but go check him out if you wanna see other alternative points of view on this because he's, uh, I'm one of the only people I know doing this as well as Mike, where we're the only ones that are kind of giving an alternative perspective instead of just saying everything Trish says is gold and completely true. So now, let's get into this. Let's get into Peter Mon and his credibility. So the first thing I wanna go over is Petty Page did a documentary about Peter a couple years ago. Go check that out. I'll have links in the description um, and I'll try to get links in the cards if I remember to. Please go check out this documentary that she had. It was very, very good because what it did was it outed Peter on several things he lies about, which I've been talking about. And one of the big things it talks about, which I would love to go over, there are actually a couple. Um, it talks about the fact that Peter Mon has said he's a psychotherapist and that he is a licensed psychotherapist and he does psychotherapy and counseling and life coaching. Turns out, seems like that's not true after doing a ton of digging that he has just paraded himself to be the psychotherapist that he's not. Um, and on top of that, in being a psychotherapist, he put out private information on social media about his clients, about his clients, and has never once apologized for it. This information surfaced at the same time a couple years ago when a lot of Peter's R-word behavior back in the day, please infer, came out and he addressed that, but he didn't address the fact that he put out private information on former 
clients. And as far as I'm aware, and I don't keep up with him too much, but as far as I'm aware, he still hasn't addressed whether or not he actually is licensed to be a psychotherapist. So a psychotherapist who doesn't have a license, who puts out private information about his clients. So I would like to sit back and let's look at a clip from Petty Page and her documentary she did, and please go check it out because it's very good, to hear the very credible, credible Peter Mon speak and, uh, you know, be a, a very good, decent, moral, upstanding person that doesn't just lie and start gossip or do things to make himself look good, like cash in on some drama he can ride on and get his name on. Let's take a look. Peter has made sure that his credentials have been known at every single turn on his YouTube channel. If there were any life lessons to be learned, it was because Peter Mon was a therapist or a life coach or a counselor, and he would occasionally refer to himself as a psychotherapist. Now, as soon as the Wolfpack wool was kind of taken from my eyes, I looked back on my previous encounters with Peter Mon, and I couldn't work out how somebody who had training in psychotherapy and other forms of behavioral therapy Therapy, could be so blindsided by personal agenda that they don't see who they are hurting in the process. And that's when I decided to do some digging. And this is what I found. Okay, so if we take a look at my license e-government, and this is for the state of Indiana, it's basically a portal of which you can search for people's credentials. So I just put in Peter Mon's name, and as you can see here, it brings up his full name, Peter Alexandra Mon, and also his license number that's been given to him by the acupuncture committee. Now, as you can expect, I was quite confused by this. I had a look a little bit further, and it says, yes, it was definitely provided by the acupuncture committee as an acupuncture detox specialist. There is no license that is active or inactive um, for Mr. Peter Mon for the state of Indiana for him ever having any kind of credentials which would be pertaining to being a therapist or a psychotherapist or any kind of therapy in any any way. Now, if you take a look at his ad referral website, you will see that he is a pre-licensed professional, which is a MSW, which is a Master of Social Work. So what, I know you're wondering, you're sitting there thinking, well, what is a pre-licensed professional? Basically, a pre-licensed professional is somebody who works underneath a mentor of some kind, somebody who has got the credentials and qualifications to do whatever specific part of the sector it is that he wants to work in, such as becoming a psychotherapist. So somebody who has credentials in psychotherapy would be mentoring him. However, although he is able to charge separately, he is unable to work alone. That meaning that he has to have whoever the psychotherapist is, whoever is helping him under this mentorship and guidance, he has to have them around at all times. Which means there is absolutely no way in God's universe that he could have been working as a psychotherapist or even a pre-licensed psychotherapist in his own practice. He may have been able to be a counsellor or a life coach but definitely could not be working as a psychotherapist or a pre-licensed psychotherapist without the mentorship of whoever is helping him get his licensing. So for my British viewers, being a pre-licensed psychotherapist is the equivalent of any kind of company having an apprentice. They can charge a hell of a lot less and have a hell of a lot more clients due to the fact that they are charging less. It is a fantastic way for people who cannot afford traditional therapy, um, say if this is somebody who is like full-time employed and they can't afford to shell out between $200 to $300 on a therapy session so they can have say a 100 to 150 dollar therapy session from a pre-licensed therapist a lot of companies do have that option available but the difference is with pre-licensed psychotherapists is that they cannot be insured so that means that if you have health insurance and therapy is covered within your health insurance plan you cannot seek therapy from a pre-licensed psychotherapist it has to be by a licensed psychotherapist because they have the licensing to insure the insurance company so that's why I was pretty surprised when searching on his um, ad referral website that it says that he accepts 
insurance, which is is impossible. There's no way he could have. I'm hoping that that was something that was just kind of missed when he was creating the account or whatever. But there's no way he would have been able to charge insurance. Because, I mean, if he did, that's, that's straight up insurance fraud, my dude. That is straight up insurance fraud. So next up is his licensing of being a acupuncture detox specialist and what does that really entail? Now basically acupuncture detox specialists will be able to provide acu detox to people as a therapeutic means of detoxification and basically uh, it can help people in a number of ways. I think it's um, called like ear point acupuncture therapy and basically it can help people like become calm, deal with like various numbers of health issues, various numbers of um, behavioral issues and basically help people to become calm and more tranquil and more willing to receive the therapy say if they are in group therapy or if they are in cognitive behavioral therapy basically just help them to be able to be willing to receive that especially if they're dealing with the medical side effects of like drug and alcohol abuse because obviously you get rattling where they get the shakes and all of that malarkey so it helps bring them around and uh, helps keep them calm whilst they receive the therapy that they have been obviously prescribed by the actual therapist in charge. A lot of people who are studying to become licensed therapists or licensed psychotherapists, it is uh, by a lot, a lot across the health board, a lot of people in the US believe that this is a very important step in order to provide good um, therapy and healthcare to people. But in essence, this is a paid for course. I mean, I've been having a look at the course myself, just not for me, but like I've been having a look at the course myself in order to do research on this whole um, issue and this whole topic. And when I was having a look, like literally you can like purchase the course for like $600, including your licensure at the very end of the course. And it just seems like there is no qualifications to be able to become an acupuncture detox specialist so essentially me with having absolutely no health and social care background well I do have like an MVQ too in health and social care but anyway like anybody who has like a without any qualifications in health or social care can go ahead and become a licensed acupuncture detox specialist Basically, without going too deep into everything, Mr. Mon has been um, basically calling himself a psychotherapist. Whilst not a protective term, uh, obviously it's pretty much thrown upon within the LMHC, which is the licensing for mental health counsellors within the state of Indiana. And if this doesn't convince you, let's take a look at what came out of Peter Mon's mouth himself. Okay, so a lot of people ask me, what I do and I do corporate coaching so I don't really know how to explain it bigger than that except for that like I do like a lot of trust building team leadership things like that right but typically when I do it it's like planned out like months ahead and so like I might do like one a week because I to be honest with you I mean it pays pretty well so um, the other thing is is that I used to work um, at, in a treatment facility and I worked about 50 to 60 hours a week and then on top of that I had a private practice when I was in a psychotherapist and then when I was a life coach um, because I built as a psychotherapist for many many years and did a lot of like court ordered therapy individual therapy things like that and worked with all kinds of cases mostly addiction cases though um, and I was really well known for that and doing testimony and whatever but anyway Guys, I'm a life coach. I was a counselor and a therapist for years and years and years. True story. No lie, okay? I started working in a treatment center in 1995. I worked there for 13 years. I then went in and had my own counseling practice. That changed over to a life coaching practice. It's a long story, you guys. I'll explain it someday on this video. It's really ooh, boring. I love it. I love every minute of it, okay? Depending on where your viewpoint is, I find this extremely misleading. If I am going to a therapist or somebody who calls themselves a psychotherapist, I would be under the guise um, that this person was fully licensed, but it's clear to me that Mr. Mont isn't 
fully licensed. So I went onto a website called thriveworks.com because I thought, well, how does this man have his own counseling practice, like he said in several videos prior? And how can he operate a counseling practice without a license? Now, obviously, this is them talking about the state of Massachusetts, but I've had a look online and pretty much Massachusetts and Indiana operate very, very similarly. So this is the question and here is the answer and I'll be reading them out to you and coming back with my thoughts. So it says, hi, Dr. Senator, I'm currently in Massachusetts and hold an MA in psychology, mental health counseling. I am now working towards my LMHC at a community mental health clinic. I'm set to take the licensing exam in a few months as well and have completed half of the total hours needed for state licensure. My question to you is, if someone holds an MA in psychology and wanted to open a 100% cash practice without diagnosing or billing insurance, is this okay? If the client is fully aware that the person is unlicensed and is not representing themselves, keyword, as a licensed clinician, I have read articles by you that stated that certain terms, i.e. mental health counsellor, etc., are regulated by the licensing board and cannot be used by unlicensed clinicians. Do you happen to know which terms in Massachusetts are not regulated? Question mark. And the doctor replied with the following. This is a very good and specific question. I'm going to tell you what I believe you can do and can't do. I'm not going to tell you that I recommend it or that I think it's a good idea. However, that being said, I think it's fair for you to fully understand your options under the rules and law of Massachusetts. First, the ACA, American Counseling Association, officially discourages intern level providers to work in private practice settings, even under close supervision. Second, as of the last time I checked, circa 2008, the regulated term in Massachusetts was mental health counsellor. At that time, perhaps still, a provider could work as a counsellor, psychotherapist, life coach, consultant, or a number of created designations. However, if one were working as a psychotherapist, he or she, would not be able to use those hours towards their licensure hours. Also, I believe that MA requires that a supervisor be on the premises during the time of service for pre-licensure hours to count. Things to consider if you plan on opening a psychotherapy practice. One, some people in the industry, including the licensure board, may perceive that you are running a practice by finding a loophole in the rules. Two, your client will have no counsellor client confidentiality privilege. More on that later because I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Three, again, you won't be able to use these hours spent doing psychotherapy for your hours towards your counselling licensure. Four, you might want to do some research into getting liability insurance that will cover the type of practice you plan to operate. Five, the rules may have changed since the last time I looked into this and I do not warranty any part of this answer. Put simply, whilst I believe it's possible for you to run the practice that you are referring to, I think it's risky clinically. And I would recommend that you just hammer out your hours and your supervision and get your license. You're so close to being finished. And running a coaching or a psychotherapy practice will only delay you. So as you can see in the state of Massachusetts, it is something that is frowned upon, if not very heavily discouraged. So I decided to take a look into the rules of Indiana. So basically on the website Quora, uh, somebody had asked a question as to the rulings on calling yourself a counselor in the state of Indiana. And somebody by the name of Jonathan Singer, who is a professor, clinical social worker and a social and also runs a social podcast. <laughs> um, he also uh, chimed in on what is acceptable for the state of Indiana. And he says that basically, counselor is not a protected term. You can hang a shingle and call yourself a counselor without any license or degree. If you say that you are a social worker, psychologist, or even a mental health counselor, you are committing a crime in most states in the USA. If you call yourself a counselor, not a social worker or psychologist, etc., and provide psychotherapy services, you open yourself up to liability for practicing therapy without a license. 
that's pretty deep, dude. And the next thing it is that I want to speak about is point two, like I showed you prior, which is your clients will have no counsellor client confidentiality privilege. Now, this is really important for us to note, purely because of some of the things that Peter Mon has said and done on social media pertaining to specific clients. So I'm going to show you some screenshots and I'll come back with my commentary. I've been waiting for an hour and 20 minutes for a client who is late. We'll be addressing my anger issues when she gets here. My client just said, Britney Spears is a slut. Huh, youth, they just don't understand. One of my clients said, if I can't cry about it, I don't care about it. Love that. On my way to see my Saturday AM clients, better have smiles on their faces. Well, as if. Don't know if it's hilarious or sad to sit in front of my office and watch drunks stumble out of the bar across the street. Hmm. Add in the Aquarius, you know I'm a therapist, so if you need counseling for your sex addiction made obvious by your tweets, let me know. Lol. My client had all of his stuff stolen and has no money. I offered him one of our old TVs, and he asked if it was a flat screen. What the fuck? Life was so much easier when I was just a psychotherapist working in a locked facility with teenage drug addicts. <laughs> one of my clients asked me if I'm attracted to twinks or bears. I said, man. Ugh, totally resisting client. No show by a client today, uncalled for. I love when clients dictate how I should do my job. Uh, isn't that the reason you're sitting in my office? Because you know so much? Somebody actually went out of their way to contact Fairbanks, which is where he used to work, the facility of which he used to work at, um, and actually showed them all of the tweets and all of the negative things he said about clients, or all of the passing things that he said about clients that would be easily identified if you were the client themselves. And Fairbanks actually replied to this person and said that they were going to be notifying it with their HR department. Now, I don't know contractually if anything can be done about this situation, but it seems enough has been seen by Fairbanks for them to want to take it somewhat seriously, even if it's just having it in a file and logging it. Okay, and this one is so important that I feel the need that I'm, I'm not going to use a voiceover artist for this. Thank you very much, whoever you are. And I'm going to be reading this out manually because I feel like I really need to drill home the importance of what I'm about to say. So this is Peter Mom when he had his private practice in 2012, the 26th, on his public... And I, I need to make this very clear, his public Facebook page in which he says, no offense people, but the weather really is not that bad out there. I just came into my office and in actuality got here in time for the first time in years and everybody is canceling. Petermon is referring to when he was going to work and there was a massive snowstorm that ensued onto Indianapolis and some of his clients were cancelling on him on the day. Now, this gets more and more disturbing as we continue. He continues, I work in the wrong field. Drug addicts know how to get out in any kind of weather to get what they need. Now I'm stuck in the office. Like, I literally cannot... How disgraceful. And underneath this specific post, the conversation gets even worse. I've taken out people's profile photos and last names, obviously for their privacy, but somebody by the name of Amy says, back then, I would have walked miles to get what I needed. Now, meh, I'm not quite as bold today, lol. Then Peter Mon says, you know, Crack Mary ain't closed today. And then she says, She's always open, even when the post office says, screw it, she's still doing her thing. And then Heather says, laugh my effing ass off, they're all out here celebrating the world's best local day off treatment. Now, whilst obviously everybody always has like issues with work and like things that happen at work that really upset them, but... To be honest, if speaking about clients when you're in a profession that requires a level of confidentiality was not bad enough, you know, speaking about specific things that clients have said to you, whether important or not important at all, just goes to show that, I mean, this is the way that I feel. If I was going to a therapist on a weekly or bi-weekly basis to see them because I didn't feel like I had anyone to talk to about various different situations involved in my own life, to know that that 
that person, that professional, was on the internet, on their own name, writing things about various different clients would upset me. Now, whilst what he said is not necessarily anything bad, but me as an individual, putting my trust into another human being, to see words that I said to them publicly, would make me feel like I couldn't trust my therapist. I mean, I can't be the only person who feels that way, who feels like this is a massive, massive breach of confidentiality. And in this particular situation where he is talking in a derogatory way about drug users, first of all, as an ex-drug user, that's highly hypocritical. And secondly, like, dude, like, this are your, these are your clients, these are your people, these are the people who put their trust in you, and you're talking about, you know, crack Mary ain't closed today, how dare you, how dare you, I can't believe you were ever in a privileged enough position to speak about people in this way, and how can you be in a position remaining unbiased when you all already, like, clearly have some kind of bias or prejudice towards people who have chosen that kind of lifestyle, a lifestyle that you used to have. Now, if that's not bad, enough, let me tell you a little bit about me personally with the situation with Peter Mon. Peter Mon made videos about me, and fine, he has a right to do that. Um, and he was, he would go back and forth, but, and, and guys, he's, I, I just, honestly, he's made eight videos, I can't sift through them all, so I'm just going to kind of give you the overview of what happened. He basically told people to an extent, he would go back and forth on, I'm not saying she doesn't have medical issues, but then he would allude to the fact that I don't in really shady ways. Like, I'm not saying she's on medical issues, but if she did, she couldn't film all the videos she does. It's stuff like that. So he would say, well, she, I'm not saying she's lying, and then, but here's my statement to prove she is, and I'm gonna look at you or do something weird or flip my fan in a very shady way to let you know I'm trying to tell you she's lying without actually saying it so nobody can actually call me out on it. Well, Peter Mon with me specifically had told everybody to an extent that on some level he alluded to the fact that I'm probably lying and trying to manipulate my audience by talking about how bad my health was um, because if I really needed insurance, number one, I could come to him. When I did go to him, and unfortunately my Twitter is gone, I don't have the tweets, but Peter has read our conversations privately without my permission. He said, I'm a licensed psychotherapist, come to me, I'll help you find resources. I came to him, he was not interested in helping me. Oh, and as a licensed psychotherapist, then he put out all our private messages without even asking me. Because you know, that's what Peter does as a psychotherapist. He puts out all that information. Oh, and he didn't help me when he publicly offered to. Then he told his audience, I could get on something called Sooner Care. I live in Oklahoma. Sooner Care is insurance for people who need insurance who can't get access to it. Ah, but here's the kicker. There are qualifications. One of the qualifications for me would be, in my age group, I'd have to be a mother. And he never said that. So he alluded and made people think that I am lying and making things up about my illness. He said, I will help her, then didn't. And he did that just to get me in a private conversation to then do a video so he could talk about our DMs and put all my private information out there just to have something to talk about so he can look like the hero and I'm the villain. That's what Peter does. It's very predatory behavior. Now, whatever he wants to say about me otherwise, whether or not it's lies, dramas, exaggeration, which by the way, in our DMs, I did come to him and say he got a lot of things wrong about me. He let me know in the nice enough terms, I'm not interested if I got something wrong. I'm, I don't care to fix that. If I lied or made up or spread gossip about you, I don't really care. Now, he said it more polite, of course, but I just kind of want to give you my firsthand experience with Peter. But then there was something somebody sent me and I never talked about it, which by the way, go check out on the channel. I actually have uh, videos I did all about Peter and what he has done. They are videos from a couple years ago, so I don't really want to, you know, I, I, you, you guys can go find them if you want. I have a few that I did on him and you can see more stuff in detail. But there was something somebody sent me and it just didn't sit right with me to put it out. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And you would think with Trisha calling Shane the literal devil and literal evil and there's no souls behind him and Ryland's eyes, you would think what I'm going to tell you has to do with Shane Dawson. Turns out Peter Mon killed his healthy dog for his new relationship. Oh, you think I'm joking? Let's hear it from Peter Mon in August of 2017. A little sad news today. I, I'm trying not to be sad about it. Um, 
we found a lump on Pee-Pee's, like, chest. And it literally just showed up overnight. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Pee-Pee in a lot of my videos. He has a horrible cough. And, um, like a year and a half ago, when we took them to get their shots, the vet at that time, it was a different vet that we go to now, she said that she was worried that maybe it was a heart murmur. And so this is not on the side of his heart, um, I don't think, but it really worries me. I was, of course, online reading all these articles about lumps on dogs, and I guess a lot of them are benign, but you have to get them in right away, so I'm going to try to, I mean, we leave next, you know, week, at the end of next week for Miami, and um, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to get him into the vet tomorrow. Like, from, I'm going to try to get him on the vet, to the, into the vet on Monday morning. Because I'm not going out of town and not knowing what's going on with my dog. I'm just not. And what's so sad about it is I was watching him tonight, like, outside and just running around. And he's just such a happy dog. And he doesn't seem like there's anything physically wrong with him, you know. He does get caught up in these coughing spurts, so. It makes me worried about the little guy, so. And Alex immediately goes into this. You know, we should probably talk about what's going to happen if, like, we have to make some serious choices. I said I'm not putting a dog down that is healthy. I'm just not going to do that. Um, I said I did that before because my dog was so aggressive. I mean, I had my last dog 11 years, and because he was... Alex couldn't move in with Pee, Pee because my other dog would have just killed him. I mean, literally would have killed him. I never even had my mom in my house in 11 years. She never once came into my house because she was so terrified of this dog. He bit my ex, sent my ex to the emergency room. I mean, it was horrible. But, I mean, I had to put him down at 11 years because I couldn't have a relationship. And so, and he couldn't be on a farm. The vet told us that. There's, you, this dog will attack other animals. He can't be on a farm. So, I mean, he couldn't be with an older person because he would have bitten an older person. He couldn't, like, put his food down. He would attack your hand. He was one of the most aggressive. I mean, our vet said he was one of the most aggressive dogs that anybody she had ever seen. And so, um, but I'm not putting a dog down that's, you know, not, um, that's not unhealthy. I mean, that's not in pain. So I tried to look into this a little more. So Peter Mon, who's always, and he did this in my videos, you will go donate to the ASPCA. He was very mad that I had a Patreon um, to help me with my medical bills when several times he illness shamed and said, just go get a job. I can't believe you don't want to work. I have epilepsy and I work. You should be able to work. Well, Peter, some people are so sick that they can't. I should be on disability, but I'm really trying to fight that, but I'm having to accept. I'll probably never be the person that I was before. My situation is not fun and it's a little bit dire. I do my best with it. And now that we figured it out and I'm on the path to hopefully slowly getting into remission, it's a little better. But not everybody can have a functioning illness and work. I worked with my illness for years until it got too bad. But you as a psychotherapist, I guess for you to shame and make fun of people that have illnesses because they can't get a job because you're bitter that you have to work, I guess that's uh, that's pretty appropriate for you, isn't it? But uh, yeah, I, I just, I wanted to put this out here because I, I was really back and forth with it. But um, here's the situation. So it sounds like Peter had a dog for a very long time. Uh, he And he's gone back and forth with some of this, so I might be getting some of the details wrong. Just I wanna give you a heads up because I don't wanna be all these other YouTubers who sit here and act like it's truth. I'll give you the gist of what I understand. There was a dog he had he kind of-ish grew up with. He's, he, I've heard him say grow up with, but then at the same time, he's a bit older, so I don't, maybe he means throughout a different time period. I'm not really sure. But he says this dog was very aggressive, but he had the dog for 11 years and the dog was in good health. However, when he wanted to get with his boyfriend, he said the dog was so aggressive that his dog would hurt, I guess, the boyfriend's dog, or there was another animal involved, and the boyfriend. And he says that the dog was so aggressive, he, there were so many things he couldn't do with it, so the best thing to do was to take it to the pound and put him down. You know, not to actually reach, first of all, if you had the dog for 11 years, why did he do no training? To help the dog with his aggression. So Peter Mon killed his healthy dog for his relationship. And this is the guy, after all the things he said about me, 
after all the stuff he put out about his clients, and after all the what seems like lies, he's talked about being a licensed psychotherapist and practice, uh, practicing as a psychotherapist. After all of this, and I'm sure tons of other things, I'm not even mentioning Peter has done, why on earth would we take his word that Shane told him something, it must be true, because thus far, Peter has, he's gotten this much evidence from what I've seen. This much. I don't trust Peter. I don't trust it. So I wanted to put that out there because I know Shane is the devil. I don't think Shane's out there killing his animals because they're an inconvenience, that are healthy, because he doesn't, he just doesn't have the time to train them. <laughs> Amazing. I guess, you know, Peter, why would Peter Mon have the patience for anybody else? You know, for somebody like me, I'm sick and I barely can drive. I can barely drive. It's not super safe for me to drive and really to do much of anything other than what I'm doing right now, even though I have good days, a lot of bad days too. And Peter Mon gets mad and just says, go get a job. I guess he feels that way about his animals. You know, when, when the animal's going to be an inconvenience, right? Like an illness would be an inconvenience. When the animal's an inconvenience, I guess we go ahead and put it down. So funny watching so many so people support this guy under these circumstances. So I just wanted to let you know that's where you're getting your info from. That doesn't mean I'm saying Shane and Rylan are great people and that they are innocent, but I am saying I haven't seen any evidence so far except for gossip by people who are known liars, known attention seekers, and who have a history, a provable history of lying. When I see Shane and Ryland, and even Jeffrey, and I'm not even advocating for Jeffrey, all I'm saying is I'm seeing them sit back maturely and being quiet. But Shane bad. And I get it. People can be upset at him because of his past on YouTube. I understand. I am not taking that away from anybody, especially with minorities. I'm not taking that away from you. I'm just saying I would be very careful just taking the word of any YouTubers. And please look for context. Trisha will take your personal information and weaponize it against you. Literally, per what I pointed out, Ethan, Ethan Klein told her this and said this, and she did it to him and Gila. They keep her around because they're using her. They can profit off of her. They get views off of her when she's, and in fact, they, it's enabling her because when she's crazy, when she's doing all these things she does, when she's explosive, whether that's with them or with Shane, they make that money. That's sad, but Trisha also is somebody that says she idolizes Anna Nicole Smith because Anna Nicole Smith will allow herself to be degraded for money um, as long as she's getting paid, she'll be degraded. And Trisha feels the same way. So that's what's going to happen. And you know what? If that's how Trisha wants to live, that's fine. But my thing is, you know what, Trisha? Just don't bully the people around you because you have your own issues. That's it. And let's just not blindly believe gossip unless we have context and unless we have the full story and evidence. And you know why we don't have the full story? Because Shane and Rylan are being respectful. They're being mature, respectful adults. Something Trisha doesn't seem to understand about this situation. Okay, guys, if you like the video, please give me a big thumbs up, like the video, subscribe, hit notifications so you can be notified when I upload. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. As long as you're respectful, you can even disagree with me respectfully. You are always welcome here. And in fact, if you do, many times I'll sit, I'll read your comment. I'll take it in. I will take it in as long as there's not too many. If I get to where I'm getting too many, it's a little bit different. But, but if they're mean, you're not welcome here. I'm just letting you know. Like, I mean, you can type it, but I will immediately remove it. I got lots of filters on. Um, and you know, if you like this kind of content, like subscribe, share this with people that you might think enjoy it. Okay. I'm going to get more videos ready. I'm very curious to see how much more destruction Trish is going to do because that seems to be what she enjoys and she gets paid for it. So why not continue to just hurt all of the close relationships that you've ever had in your life? Because this is what you want to do. All right, guys, take care. Blessings. Lots of love to the next video. I'm wishing you guys lots of hugs, lots of kisses, and let's not just both blindly believe gossip from people who are known to be liars. That's all I'm trying to say. Bye, guys.